selection files in Donman. And as most of you uh, will know from having used Donman before, that the selection file is, is sort of integral to lots of things that you can do with the data um, by using that. The selection file itself uh, is nothing but a list of donor numbers. So lots of times people sort of get confused and when we do something expect that there to be uh, names and addresses and stuff at that initial point. Uh, but for most things it's just a list of numbers which allows us to either extract data, change data, do all sorts of things, um, update records, etc. Uh, as long as we've got the list of the donor ID numbers. So a couple of things we're going to look at today will be different ways that we can create selection files. And as we go through, so we're going to look at the primary way, which is the, the donor appeal program, which is for mailings and stuff like that. But also if I had an Excel file, I can use Notepad. There's a program for typing your own selection file. Uh, there's random selection. Uh, using the filter from the multi-find screen on the donor entry screen, birthday selection, and we'll look at some of the reports that you can run that also generate selection files that can then be used to do something else again with that list of, of donors. Okay. So we'll go straight away from here. We'll go into Donman. We get to the right place. Okay. So for most of the, the general selections that we do for mail outs, etc., like that. We do go through donor appeal and into create donor selection file. The reason for this is because it already has the preset um, questions for excluding the people that are marked not to get mail. So they've got a mail code of no mail. They've got a date that they, that they don't need any mail till a certain date, or we've put a date of death on the person's record. Okay, so either of those things will, by default, exclude people from the um, selection process. So in this case, if I just put in so I'm just going to create selection file 2014 and go through. So as most people um, have been through this, and we've done a webinar uh, previously on the selection process, so we're not going to go through that whole thing at this point. But it's really just to show that as I go through, I have got all the tabs, and this is where the questions are that I was just referring to, where the system by default will exclude the no mail people, the no mail until, or people with a date of death. In certain cases, when I'm looking for people that have given money to a particular campaign or within a date range and things like that, and I'm saying for the purpose of what I'm trying to do is not about a mailing, then I do need to remember to say, no, I don't want to exclude those people, otherwise I'm not going to get a true result based on the donation. So this can quite often come up when people do a, uh, a report through either the report writer or say periodic campaign results and then do a selection file and compare the number of records and say, well, hang on, this, this is not correct. I've got a mismatch of my numbers. There's something wrong. And this, in lots and lots of cases, this, these are the questions here that have you know, skewed the results because I'm not picking up all of my donors. If I, perchance, just wanted every donor that was on the system except the people that were marked not to get mail, et cetera, then when I go through the process, and on the first page I've given it a name, I don't have to then go through all of these tabs to answer the questions. I can just go straight down to finish, and that will take me through all of the tabs to the last page, and from there I can just enter through. By default, when I get here, the system will put them into postal order, which on the donor's record, if you have a look, you'll have the suburb state postcode, uh, and then if you've got the RAT tool or, or the QAS tool for doing the address lookups, you'll have a DPID number, but then, then you'll have a number after that, which is the mail center, which is allocated by Australia Post. So by default, in order to do mailings and get discounts, etc., cetera, the um, sort order that we need to do is based on the mail center and the postcode. Okay, so by default, Donmen will do that, but you can say, in this case, if you want to change it to A for alpha, or if I do U, and enter, it'll come up and say, well, these are other ways that you can you know, sort the data. Of course, if you put the data into Excel, it's very easy to sort. Yeah. So in this case, I'll just say alpha order, yes to begin. Yeah. So it's saying that it's now picked up 115 records of my database, and it's now showing me a printout of all the things that I've said yes and no to, which in this case was very little because I just went through the whole system. But I can if I scroll right to the end of the file, 
go down and find out based on my selection criteria how many records were selected out of my total database. Because you know, so, sometimes you'll miss the number and go, oh, I can't remember how many people I've selected. Uh, just look at the report. The reports themselves, as it shows just on the part of the page here, the output that we're looking at will be saved into a folder under your DM work folder or whatever you if you've got a different working folder. Um, because there are some people that are running multi-departments or departmental banking, etc. So depending which system you've actually run it from, you'll have another folder called Selection Reports, and in this case, it's going to create a file called Test2014A.txt, which I can then open and review all of the questions about who you know it was um, or what the criteria was for selecting that group of people. Because when you look at the selection file itself, as I said, nothing but a list of numbers which isn't very helpful. So in this case, if I go down to the Open File button on the menu, and by default it's showing me Win files, which are good for reprinting banking files, etc. But if I go in here, I can select Donor Selection File. And if I sort by date modified, it'll make my life easy. So there's my selection file there. So you can see the extension on the file is APL. And that's how Donman knows that it is just a list of numbers that it can use to do certain roles or different um, things in Donman itself. If you've got a prospect system, the selection uh, extension will be PPL for prospect selection. And if you do something from the archives, the selection extension will be XPL. Okay. So it's really just so that Donman knows which file um, the selection file has been generated from. So if I'm going to uh, try and do something with those records or extract the data, it knows that it should be looking in either the prospect, the donor, or the archive file to do that. So in this case, if I double click on my selection, as you can see, there's nothing but a list of donor numbers. So by itself, not very helpful for doing anything else um, as far as you know, just looking at it. Quite often people will create the selection file, then go into Excel and open it and say, there's something wrong, I've just got a list of numbers. Okay. So as long as you really remember that when you create the selection file itself, it is just a list of numbers, um, and there are lots of things you can do with that. So one of the main things, of course, would be to go down and create your mail merge data file to do a mailing or update the donor mail, mail history for all the donors as part of a mailing. Okay. So that's really just the, the beginning of selection files. Lots of times there's things that have happened, and we might say, look, I need to create a selection file, but it's data that I've sent, say, external, that's been washed or it's been, someone's looked at it and removed records, etc. And from that, I then want to create a selection file from an Excel file. If I switch down here to Excel, so in this case, I've got a selection file that has been turned into data. And you can see one of my fields is my donor number. So if I now want to create a selection file from that, because someone's gone through and said, look, I've looked at some of the records and I've deleted them from the file. So from my original selection process and my data extract, uh, there's now less records. But I want to update the records that are part of that file. If we highlight the column for donor numbers, just start a new sheet, copy that in. I don't need the actual title for donor number, because as we saw previously, the um, selection file is just the numbers. It doesn't need to have a title, unlike data files. So if we click there, delete that, I've now basically got a selection file in the making. So again, it is just a list of numbers. If I said I wanted to sort by number or anything, of course I can do that in Excel. And say, OK, I want to remove some records, whatever it might be. So from there, I'm now saying, OK, from what's left, I now want to create a selection file that I can use in Donman from my Excel file. In order to do that, I need to go to File, Save As. Yeah. So in this case, I'm saving it into my uh, test system. And by default, Excel will save it as either an XLS or XLSX, depending on the version of Excel you're using. So the first thing you need to do is go down here and choose Tab Delimited Text File. If we do that last, um, Excel by default will still put .txt extension on there. If I now put the quotation marks in and type the name of my selection file in, and again I'm putting the .apl extension because this is a list of donor numbers, 
And the quote marks is really saying that Excel will then maintain the name and not put a, another extension on it. So if I do save, so yes, okay, so Excel is going to complain that it's because I'm not saving it as an Excel file. But now I've, I have created a file that I can use back in Donmin because, it, again, it's nothing but a list of the donor numbers. So if I went back to Donmin now and open file, Again, change it to my selection files down here. And now I've got my test2 APL file. And again, when my viewer decides to look at that, I'll see because I've got it open already in Excel. But again, you'll see it, it'll be nothing but a list of donor numbers. Okay. So that, that's another way that quite commonly people say, look, I, I've got something that I need to create the actual selection file from, but it's data that's already been extracted and manipulated, but I want to do it after the fact. So the result at the end is still the same. I've got a selection file that I can then use to update those people. So if it was a chance data that I've sent to somebody else to do a mail out, and then they've removed records or done some cleanup, whatever, they've sent me back the final result or the list that is actually going to be part of the mailing. I can then create the selection file. down all of that. I can then go back into Donman and I wouldn't need to create the mail merge file in this case because I already have all the details in Excel, but I might want to go in to update the donor mail history from that amended list of people. So hopefully that will help you sort of do that. And that way to create the selection files would be just to create them in Notepad. So if I just run Notepad, yeah. And again, it's really just a matter of just type the number in that you want. 120, 14, whatever. So you can see it's starting to build the same sort of structure. Where again, it is nothing but a list of donor numbers. Yeah. But if you just put in one number and then put in the carriage return, sometimes it doesn't see that there's actually an end to the file, um, and it doesn't <laughs> and it doesn't work. But even if you only put in a single record, let's go back down. Just go there, just make sure you put the enter, then save the file the same sort of way. So I can do file, save that. Yeah. And again, in this case, I can just save it as an APL file. I don't need to do anything else with that. Yeah. So one of the more common things that does come up is uh, where people say, look, when I send out my mailings, I've got the donor numbers on the envelopes or the labels or something like that. So when it comes back, I want to be able to handle the return mail fairly easily. Yeah. So if I just wanted to mark the donor records for now, put an extra code on them or do something else so I can look them up or even put them into the lookup, if you go into the donor appeals again so from your start menu, and you'll see there's an option in there that says type your own selection file. So in this case, again, it's asking me, do I want to create a selection file? So if I say, put in the name of a selection file. Okay. From there, I can just type in the donor numbers and enter. So from the labels or whatever it is I've got, I can just type in the donor numbers off the labels, enter, make sure it's the right person, just enter. And I keep doing that until I'm at the end of my file. So as you go through, it's finding each of the donors and validating that, but it's adding them to this selection file as I go. So if I were to escape, so in this case, if I were to escape and say, okay, look, that's the, the return mail people I've got for today, but I don't, I don't want to do anything with them at the moment. I want to wait until, you know, the end of the week, but then I get more return mail or another list of people I need to do something with, with this more on and a sort of ad hoc version I haven't got something that ties them together apart from the part of the mailing, and I have now got return mail. I can then go back into type your own selection file. Okay. I could find my selection file that I created before, so you'll be able to see you've got all of them sorted by date. Okay, so there's my test R mail I created just previously. If I choose that now, I get an option to overwrite, so I'm starting from scratch, or I can append. 
So if I choose append, I can now choose a different donor number, and I'm now adding those to the selection file. But it, it is a nice, easy way that you can sort of generate a selection file based on something that's not really tying the records together based on anything else other than they've all come back on envelopes, and I just want to be able to do something with them very quickly. So that's the way that you can just go through. And as I said, you can either start from, from scratch. If you said, oh, look, I, I don't know who's in the file. I just want to start from scratch. You can type in a whole new selection file name or use an existing one. And as it came up with a prompt there, you can overwrite it to start from scratch or you can append records to it. So the records that are already there at the moment will stay there. And anything you type in again from now will just be added to that selection file as you go through. Once you're finished, just escape and your selection file will be created. Okay, so if we go and have a check, again, back in here, my donor selection file. Okay, so there's my file with the right extension. And if I double click, I can see there's the numbers that I've added. Okay, so even if I've added someone accidentally, the, how we're viewing this at the moment is just a viewer. I haven't got the option to edit it. But again, I could open the selection file in Notepad and just remove numbers that I might have put in there accidentally or incorrectly. So whichever way you wanted to do it, you can certainly um, go back and, and edit the file. Or if there's only a small number, just start from scratch because it takes very little time to generate that again. Okay. So once we've got that, we've basically created the own selection file. Again, we can use that to go through, um, do a bulk change, um, you know, put a seal on the donor's records or read them into the lookup to have a look and see if we actually can look them up using white pages or anything else, checking addresses, etc., to make sure that uh, there's not some reason that they, the mail has come back return mail that's just an error on the record. Okay. From a list of people, sometimes I might do a, a large selection and say, okay, that's nice, but I've got too many records for what I want to mail. And from that, I just want to pull off a segment or a part of that big selection file. So the next option, the next, pardon me, the next option down on the menu is select random donors from a selection file. So in this case, it's given me the option to do donors or prospects. So in this case, all of my selection files I'm playing with today will be donor selection files. But if you've got prospects, you can do the same sort of thing, and you'll have a program on the prospect menu for doing this. Yeah. So in this case, I've got my donor file. Yeah. And this is a problem that we'll all get sooner or later, where you get so many selection files <laughs> that you'll say, oh, I can't find my file anymore. Okay. So there is a program that we've, we've covered in a previous uh, webinar for doing a cleanup of your selection files where you can sort them by date. Or, or if you're on Windows 7, it has got the ability to sort of show only certain sorts of records. And again, you can sort them by date. Because now that you've sort of seen there is nothing in there but a list of numbers, um, the selection file by itself is very useless, you know, especially if it's three, four, five or more years old. And it's sitting there because your data would have changed so much in the time between when it's created and now that it sort of becomes irrelevant that you're going to have that. Okay. So if I get through and say, OK, in this case, I've got my test 2014A selection. And from that, I only want to pull out 20 people. So say I had 1,000 and I wanted to pull out you know, 200 people or 2,000 people, whatever it might be. It's just saying I'm looking for a number that's divisible fairly close to the original number. So if I enter, the system saying there's 115 records. Okay, and it now says, how many records do you want in the new file? <laughs> so this is, sorry, this is where I should have given it a name. So this is test 201. B20. So I'll just put the 20, so now I'm going to have, that's where my 20 records going to be. Okay. If I said now, from that I want to create a new selection with 20 records in there. In this case here, it's got how many records in the input file do you want to skip? This would be if you had a really good idea of what was in the data and you said, look, I want to skip the first, you know, 100 records or 200 records, etc. But again, it's not like a totally random algorithm. The system saying, if you selected 20 records out of the 115, it's going to be fairly close to sort of every fifth or every sixth record, something like that. But for most purposes, when I'm doing it for mailing, etc., that is random enough. 
Okay, so from there, I can then just say enter, and it really doesn't give me any prompts or anything now. It's just saying that my selection file has been created, and it will now have the 20 records in there. Okay. So that, again, is just another way that you can say, if I've created a large file and said, look, I just want to do a mailing to, say, half the records at this time, and another half, you know, later on because I'm trying to do different sorts of mailings or letters or whatever it is that you're, we're trying to accomplish at the end, I can then take that big file, split it into a smaller file, or even do it, a, a, you know, a couple of times to get a bit messy. But normally I'd do it once, say, okay, out of that I want to select, you know, 25% of that file based on the numbers, or 50%, whatever it is you need to mail, um, and just generate a new selection file very easily. Okay. So from there, we've basically looked at the three main things on the donor appeals menu that you've used, which is the create donor selection file, the type your own selection file, and the select random donors from a selection that you've already created. Yeah. Another way that we can create a selection file is by going into the donor entry screen and using MultiFind, which we use pretty much on a daily basis at the moment for you know looking up people and doing things like that. So when we're doing all of our housekeeping chores. So if I go into MultiFind in this case, if you come in and there's already a name in here that we've searched for or something like that, if you push the F12 button, we'll clear the screen so that there's no search criteria at all at the top. From there, you can see down the bottom of the screen, there's a button that says Add Filter. So I can do this in two places. On the donor's record, I can do it straight from the main screen, or if I do it in MultiFind, um, I can search multiple records. So if I was looking for something like every record that had an email address or something, so this isn't very good for doing anything complex like you do in the appeal of selections, but if you said, look, I've got uh, you know, volunteers on there or something, and I just want everyone who's got the extra code of volunteer, then I can use the filter because it's a very simple sort of searching. So with that in mind, if I go into Add Filter, it then brings up the filter dialog box, where if I click on the first drop down here, I've basically got a list of all of the fields that make up the donor record. Okay, so absolutely everything you can do. You will notice here that you've got extra code 1 down to extra code 8. If you're ever going to filter on extra codes, use the plural, which the system maintains based on the eight individual codes. So I do extra codes, must contain, and then type in the code that you're looking for. If you do extra codes equals, you'll only get people that have only got that one extra code, not exactly what you're looking for. So in this case, if I type E, I said, OK, I'm looking for all the records in my system that must have an email address. So I'm saying that the email field must be greater, in this case, than nothing. So if I enter, that's my filter. And when you do the filter, make sure that you do enter to get it into this large box at the bottom. Otherwise, it's not actually part of the filter. Or it's not active part of the filter. It'll just show on the screen. So from there, if I then accept, the system will go through and now do a search from my whole database on the people that have now met the criteria of my filter. And it's saying these are the people. And again, once I've got the list of people, I can then click on Create Selection File at the bottom of the screen, type in the name for a new selection file, and just enter. And again, the system has now created a selection file for me. Okay. So then I can use that to do a mailing or, again, whatever it is I'm trying to achieve at the end of the process. Okay. So there are quite a few different ways that we can sort of generate selection files from things that uh, might hopefully make your life a little bit easier for doing those. So from that, I'm saying, OK, I've looked at the main things. So what I'm going to look at now is the first of the reports that will also create a selection file. And then I'll hand over to Murray, and he'll run through a few of the other ones. So again, if I go into donor appeal, and there's one on the right-hand side here that says birthday selection file. Okay. So this, again, will say, what selection file do you want to create? In my data, unfortunately, I don't have any dates of birth, not even dummy ones. But normally, I would say, I want to create it called July. And then I'd include people with the birthday between the 1st of July and the end of July. Okay. So this will then generate a selection file of all the people for the July file. And they get, again, I get the options at the bottom to put in postal or alphabetic order. Normally, in this case, I'd probably choose something like alphabetic order. 
but I could then use that to also um, look at the different dates of birth on the donor record. So you'll notice just below that, so if I go 0107 14, okay, so I put in the dates of the month that I'm looking for. So from there it's got join and select the donor, the male or the female or all dates of birth. So normally you'd use all, so that you picked up all records that were um, you know, had a date of birth in the range that you're looking for. Because if you've got a Mr. or Mrs. record and you pick them up, when you create the data file, there's no way the system is specifically going to know that that is the, the you know, which partner it is um, from the donor record to sort of to say this is who you want to write to. Yeah. But from there, instead of selecting from the donor file, select from a selection file. So normally in this case, I could choose from a selection file I've already created. But what I'm really looking for is everyone whose birthday was in July. So again, I've just called it July, and I could just call it July birthdays or something like that. Put in the date range I'm looking for, and again, say I want to put that out in alpha order. Again, you can print, so you can get a list of those people. But for most things, I just want to really create the selection file. So again, like most of the prints, you'll have print, then print preview. Okay, and as I said, in my data, because I don't have any dates of birth, it's going to come so tell me that there's no records found. But for the majority of organisations that do have, you know, legitimate date, dates in there and things like that, you can also use that to produce a report of people that are having birthdays in the particular month. But you'll also get the selection file that you can use to create a merge file and maybe send birthday cards or, again, uh, whatever the end process was that you were trying to achieve by doing the selection file in the first place. Okay. So in this case, because I've done the print preview and gone, it's take me back, so if I then said I can now want to create one and do it for August, then I could, you know, sort of get ahead of myself. Uh, if not, I can just escape, and that will just take me back to the main menu. Okay. So most of the things that you'll find on the donor appeals menu are about creating selection files, and the other bits uh, um, or programs on that menu are about using the selection file to do different things. And as I said, one of the most common things we'll do is create the mail merge data file from that. And then if it's to do with a mailing, we then use the update donor mail history to say for this list of people, I want to update their mail history to say that I've mailed them for that campaign or the mail list or whatever it may be. Yeah. So I'll hand over to Murray now and he'll go through some of the reports that are in the system that also allow you to create selection files based on different sorts of criteria. Hello everybody. Just before I begin with my section, I'd just like to point one thing out. When Gary was doing that birthday selection, you'll notice that he used the year for 2014. He did the 1st of August through to the 31st. That program ignores the year, so that would give you anybody who would have a birthday in August in any year, not just in 2014. Otherwise, it would be a fairly useless program. Now I'm going to take you through a few other other options where you can create selection files based on other data that uh, hasn't been covered so far. Now the first one that I'm going to look at is called Donors with Single Gift Report and we can find that by going into the Reports menu and while it is also in the Campaign Reports, I'm just simply going to use the one that's in the Donor Listing Reports. It's the same program um, so it doesn't matter where you run that from. So it's this one up here called Donors with Single Gifts. Now, in the standard appeal program that Gary started off by showing you, there's a couple of sections there that might be of use for some things. For instance, we have a whole section there on donor totals where you can look at how much a donor has given, either over all time or within a specified period of time. But if you're trying to look for anyone that's given a single gift of, say, $1,000 or more, maybe within a period of time, that won't be useful because if we're looking for $1,000 or more, say, in the last two years, that program, because it's looking at donor totals, would actually include people that might have given you, say, 10 donations of $100 each. But if you're looking for people that have given individual donations of, say, $1,000, that's not going to work. Also on the history and mail screen, there is an option there for selecting donors based on their highest ever amount. And so that would only say $1,000 if there had been a single donation of $1,000 or more. However, 
that may have been 10 or even 20 years ago, depending on how old your data is. So if you are interested in finding out just those donors who have given certain amounts within a period of time, this option here, donors with single gift, is the best way to do that. So if you're trying to perhaps come up with a list of perhaps potential major donors or bequest prospects, you could perhaps use this as a starting point. Now, this is a report, but uh, later on we'll see how we can actually create a selection file from this as well. So to start off with, we just enter the period of time. So if I go from the first of the first day 2012, and I'll just do it till now, so I'll just leave the end date blank, I'm going to look for anyone that's given me an individual donation of $500 or more. Now I can be more selective. I can filter by campaign groups or by campaign and either filter in or filter out particular campaigns. So for instance, if you had maybe certain events or sales campaigns that um, where someone could buy a table of 10 ball tickets for $1,000, it's not actually a donation. So under those circumstances, you would probably want to exclude either the events campaign group if you've got one, or maybe specific campaigns. And if you were to say yes to any of those, you'll get a pop-up screen where you can nominate quite a number of different options there. So you can see there you've got the option in this case of excluding up to 20 campaigns. Now, if I wanted to run this on a, an existing selection file, so I might have a selection file of perhaps my individual donors that I've created through the normal donor appeals program, and I only want to pick individual donors that have given more than $500. If I've got that selection file already created of all my individuals, I can nominate that selection file there, and instead of going through every donor on the donor database, it will just go through those people in your selection file. The other alternative to that is down here, we can save these results to another selection file. In this, in this case, it's called GIFT RPT, as you can see here. So if I say yes to that, by doing this with no selection file here, but saying yes there, this is going to go through all of my donors, look for any that have given individual donations of $500 or more, and create that selection file called GIFT RPT. Now that might be all that I'm after, or if I need to do some further refinement of that, in the donor appeals program, there's an option, instead of looking through every single donor to see who meets those criteria, you can, again, like in this case, you can specify a selection file, which would be in this case GIFT RPT, and from that you can then select just the individuals, or there may be other criteria of the many that are there that you would select on. So if I run this, I'm just going to do this as a print preview. Now I don't have a large number of donors there. You can see 113 donors in total, and it's picked five. So, oh, well, it's picked three. Um, so there is the list of the three donors, Mr. John B. Good, Mrs. Webb Donations, and Dame Catherine Hepburn. These people have given individual donations of at least $500. Now this is giving me the total in the period, um, but you can see um, this one is only given one donation, and that was for $500. This was one for 1,000, and this top one, they've given six in the period for 22,500, but we know that there must be at least one donation in there of $1,000. So having got that, um, you can then use that selection file. Uh, it's called GIFT RPT, and you could do a mail out to those people, or as I mentioned before, you could do a further refinement of that. So to do that refinement, I can simply do that from the donor appeals menu. So I'm just going back to donor appeals, create donor selection file. I'll call my selection file Murray. And down the bottom here, even though it's skipped down over here, in here I can type in my gift RPT and it's going to ask me how many are in there. If I press enter, it counts it. It's come up with that three that we saw on the report. And now, any of the criteria that I specify in here will only be working on those three donors in my GIFT RPT file. Um, so this is a very useful, that um, donors with a single GIFT, which I'm now going to go back to, is uh, very useful for picking those people that perhaps uh, your major donors because they can afford to give individual donations of $1,000 or more. 
what you do have to be a little bit careful of is it's not actually picking the highest ever donation in that period. It just simply picks those people that have got or given at least one donation within the specified amounts. So if I were to say, yes, from 010112 or whatever I did before, and I say from $500 to, say, $999.99, I can run that report and I'll probably get one donor. Um, but I might get two or even more. If I then ran this again and said I want from $1,000 to 10000 it's quite possible that the same donor will come up simply because as well as having given a donation between $500 and $999 in that period, they've also given one between 1000 and 10000 So just be warned, this is not looking at the highest donation within that period, it's just looking for at least one donation in that period. Okay, the second one that I'm going to have a look at is the next one in this um, donor listing report. It's called Donors with Multiple Gift Year. Now, this is very useful for give, finding um, your longer term donors or your more consistent donors. What this will allow you to do is specify a number of years and then from that you can select donors that have given at least one donation in a certain number of years within that period. So if I go back, say, to 2004, and I'll do this up to 2014, and I'm going to use the tax year, for starting with July, and I'm going to say they must have given to at least maybe five years within that 10-year period. I can say that they must be consecutive, so they have to be one year after another for five years. Or I can say, no, I don't care whether they're necessarily one after another, but they must have given to at least five separate years. Again, I can filter in or filter out by campaign. And again, I can do this based on a selection file that's previously been created. So if I have, again, say my list of individuals, um, as a selection file from the donor database. I can nominate that file here and then it will only look through those donors to see which of those meet the criteria that I've given it up the top. Again, like the previous report, this one can also say a selection file called conyear.apl or you would just refer to it as conyear as your selection file. Now, in preparing for this um, presentation, we did note that there was a bug there that when it does it, down the bottom you can see how it says that it outputs to this file called conyear.txt, which will exist in the reports text subdirectory of DMWork or whichever um, particular directory you're working under. For most people that will be DMWork. What we found was that it was actually writing both the donor numbers and the output to the text file. They were both going into conyear, uh, the selection file. Now, we have had that fixed, so if you are interested in perhaps using this program within the next day or two, then please, on the comments for your webinar, please ask for the, um, the Conyear report or words to that effect, and what we'll do is we'll compile a list of all of those people and we'll just send you the updates for that program so that it actually does create both the Conyear selection file and the conyear.txt file in the reports subdirectory. So this is very useful just to find those people that are giving you know, multiple years over a period of time. To do this by normal selection process would be fairly difficult. You could run a selection file for each of the 10 years and then perhaps throw that into Excel and look for where you've got more than five within that period. But this just becomes so much easier to use it this way. Okay, um, well I may as well run this anyway, so I'll say yes to output for that, print, and it does a few passes through. Okay, so at the end of the thing I've got my report here, and this is the information, These, the donor number and the person's name, that's what we get output to that report. Um, text file, and of course just the donor numbers get output to the selection file. So very useful for trying to find those longer term donors that have been consistently giving over a period of time. Much easier than any other way that you could do.
The next report that I'm going to have a look at is called the diary report. Now the diary report actually exists on a number of different screens. You'll find it on the housekeeping screen. You'll find it on this donor listing reports. It's also on the, um, I was going to say volunteers, I think it's on the trust report, on the trust system and also on the quest system. So where you might go into those and it might actually say the quest report, it will actually run the diary report. So I'm going to run that from here. Now, it does give you options up the top there for four different groups of people. Um, so depending on what group you choose, the results that you get in your selection file will vary. If I do it on general donors, so I'll just tick the box there and enter a few times. So I'll get a little up here where I can pick the criteria that I want to use when I'm selecting my donors. So if you've got a contact date, next contact date, you can put the details or date range in there. Um, if they're referred to a particular member of staff, you can pop the details in there as well. But of course, you can do that on the standard appeals program. You can also do the donor number range, which again, you can also do on the standard donor appeals program. If we go out of there and we choose to do it, say, on the bequest prospects, then we get a different set of criteria that we can use in order to select the people that it's going to report on. So we can look at the visit dates or the next visit dates for the um, on the bequest record. Are we only looking at the top donors, bequest prospects? Um, if they're a bequest prospect, do you want to select by the bequest code? What stage are they along the path to becoming a bequester? You've got um, postcode range, again, next visit by which member of staff? and donor number range again. And again, if I go into reports on trusts, I'll get quite a comprehensive set of criteria that we can choose which trusts we want to select for our report. So we've got a large number of options there. I won't go through these because these are very much relevant to trusts, but if you're familiar with the trusts, you'll know what these various things do. Having selected those, I'll just, no, sorry, need to say yes to that. Now, I don't know how many people I've actually got there, but essentially I'm picking everybody who's got a trust record. If I'm doing this as a report, you can see I've got various options here that I can choose to output to my report. But what I'm more interested in is the options down the bottom. Again, like the previous two reports, we can do this. So instead of looking at all, in this case, trusts, we could do that based on a selection file. But more importantly, I can output to a selection file here. And in this case, I'm actually allowed to give it the name rather than it being automatically specified for me. So I'll call this test one, something like that. And that'll go away. I'll have to pick some records. It'll output my report, which will be fairly basic. Uh, maybe I didn't select anything, so it's not happening anything. But it's then created my selection file. If I go to open file, I can do what Gary was doing here and pick donor selection files. And there's my test1.apl. And um, not quite sure where that went. Oh, here we go. It's just being a bit slow. And there are the donor numbers of the trusts that I selected via the donor via the diary report. So again, depending on what the criteria is that you're trying to do, you can select people based on that. Now, one of the things that we're not actually mentioning during this um, session is the fact that. In the various parts of the system, like in the pledge system, under volunteers, under some function system, there are options there which are very specific to those things where you can typically create merged data files or selection files as well based on volunteer information or pledge information or, or depending whatever it is. So we're not actually covering those. We're just doing the more general types of things. Now, the last option that I've got there is to talk about visual reporter. Now, we can do that from the reports menu, and we go into reporter. Now, we have had um, webinars in the past on using the visual reporter, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how to set up reports and things like that. What I'm more interested in today is how to create selection files from it. Now, in order for us to be able to create selection files, there the data files that we're reporting on must have a donor number. So if we tried to do a report on the campaign file, we wouldn't be able to create a selection file because there are no donor numbers in the campaign file. And even if there were, they'd be meaningless for um, a selection file. Now, 
Um, I've created a few reports, so I'll start off with one of these ones. I'll just open the existing report, and I've called it Donors Over $1,000. <coughs> so what I'm doing is I'm doing my report on the donor's file, and of course donor file has got donor numbers. I'm doing it in donor number order, although I could change that, and I'll do it in alphabetical order, say. Um, and then what I've chosen to, oh, sorry, I've chosen only those people where the overall total, donation total, is greater than or equal to 1,000. And then for my output, I've chosen donor number, title, first name, surname, and the total. And so if I go to my report, here's the report of all of those people, including donor number, their name, and the total amount that I'm outputting it. Now, what most people tend to do from here is they go save report data as text, and they create a text file with this exact same information in it, and then they would probably import that into Excel, and they might manipulate that, resort it, maybe sort it by the total amount and, and do something with it. But if we want to have a selection file, what we need to do is instead of saying save report data as text, we say save report data as selection file. Now, because I've actually saved this as a report called donors over 1,000, that's the default name that it's giving to my selection file, but you can obviously change that if you want. When I go OK, that will simply run that report, and when it comes back to the screen like this, it's actually created that and finished. Now, that was fairly simple. Let me go to another report. Um, so I'll open new report, and this is now on the bequest file. Now, in the case of the bequest file, uh, what happened there? OK. All right, so here is my report. So it's on the bequest file, but each bequest record, there is only one bequest record maximum per donor. So if I were to output every single bequest record on system, there would never ever be two bequest records with the same donor number. So again, if I look at my results, I've got donor number, name, and in this case, I've put in what their bequest code is. Again, if I go file, Save report data as selection file. Again, it's come up with the name of my report. It's got this option blanked out, and I'll come back to that on my next report. So again, I can just run that, and that's finished. It's come back at this point. Now, the final report that I've got in here is called um, Recent Donations Over $1,000. And when that comes up, what I'm doing is I'm actually picking those people where, or those donations, where the date is greater than or equal to the 1st of January 2013, and also where the amount is over $1,000. Now, I've chosen to do this in donation date campaign code order because when I'm running my report, if I've got a huge file of maybe 100,000 donations, it can jump in to the right point at the 1st of January 2013 and only look at donations after that rather than looking through the whole file. So when I look at my output from that, I've got one from John McGood, another from John McGood, then number one from one from donor number two, back to number one, then a couple of others here. Now the question marks just simply mean that those donor records have been archived. If I now go to state report data as selection file, it now gives me the option of removing duplicates because potentially I could have more than one record. And as we saw there, donor number one, it would output three records. So if I remove that, my selection file will have donor number one three times. Now, I don't really want that in most circumstances, especially if I'm trying to do a mail out. I don't want to mail to John B. Good three times. He's going to get annoyed and it's going to be a waste of your money. Now, by clicking on the remove duplicates, what that's going to do is it's going to resort it. So instead of doing it by donation date order, it's going to do it by donor number order. So as soon as it finds one record that matches, it can then skip over any others that it finds until it gets to the next donor number and then start looking for others. So if I go OK to that, it run, it's finished. And if I were to look at my selection file, now I might just get out of here and have a look at my selection file again. So uh, recent donations, okay, so it's come up with 1, 2, 1,000, 2, and 1,001. So donor, 
number one, has only appeared once. But it has actually uh, meant that, it, in this case, if I had a, a million records in donations, it would actually end up having to look through every single one of those. So it will run slow. Um, one of the other problems that you may have noticed was that 1001 and 1002 are archived records. So in this case, it's actually picked up two records that you wouldn't want to be mailing to. Now, there'd be two ways of overcoming that. In our selection file, uh, in our criteria, we could simply choose a way of saying that the donor number from the donation file is equal to the donor number from the donor file, and it would then not pick these people. The other alternative would be that we could run that into the lookup file and remove any of those archived donors. Now, I'm conscious of the time there, so I'll actually finish at that point and hand it back to Marla if she would like to go through any of the questions. Okay, thanks Murray. Um, I'll just remind everyone if they do have any questions they can post them um, in the question pane and um, any questions we don't get through now we can um, we, we document and we can uh, follow up with you offline. So um, at the moment there's just the one question posted Murray. Um, it's from mm. Ida and I think it's more back on Gary's area. It said is it possible to demonstrate update donor mail history? I'm not sure if that's one you want to take offline oh. or... Oh no, we can do that. Did you want to do that Gary? You're happy for me to do that? Because well, yeah, your screen's already up so if you do that yep. Murray it'd be great. Sure. Okay, so we go to donor appeals and assuming that we've created our merge file, we've mailed it off or perhaps as Gary's mentioned we might remove certain people from that, but so long as we've got our selection file of all the people that have actually um, ended up being mailed, we go to update donor mail history and there are three options that we can run this for. Um, now first of all, any time we do anything in bulk we have to do um, say yes we've done a backup and hopefully you do. If you make a mistake with a lot of these things sometimes there's no way back. There is in the case of update, uh, update mail history, we do have a reversal process for doing that. Okay, so what's our selection file? I may as well use test or whatever, Murray. I think that one only had the three in it. No, what did I call it? I better have a look at the list. Um, down the bottom, test one, okay, I'll use test one. Okay, so it's going to ask me how many are in there. If I press enter, it counts them. There were 11 in that particular one. Now, I can do this for campaigns, for just a staff or for a mailing list. So if I've just done a mail out, say, for my tax appeal, I would choose C for campaign. If it's just a member of staff that's doing some sort of mail out for themselves, I'd choose staff. Or if they've um, chosen something from the mailing list, you know, maybe it's your annual report or something along those lines, I would do it for mailing list. And depending on the choices I make there, it will give me the choices of what files I can update here. So if I do C for campaign, it gives me the, the greatest options there. I can update all of those three files. So let me choose CACQ as the campaign. The post mail response database, this first one there, I'm going to say yes to that. Now this is a database that keeps track of how many items of mail went to each postcode for this particular campaign that we're mailing out to for CACQ. This should be done when you first do the mail out. It might say, yes, we've done um, 10 to Turak and we've done um, 20 to Elwood. As donations come in, that database will be updated to say, oh, yes, we've had one donation from Turak and we've had five from Elwood. Over a period of time, once the campaign is finished, you can then run a report on that to say, well, you know, how well did we go? And you might say, well, we mailed 10 to Turak, but we only got one back, but it was for $10,000. Whereas we mailed 20 to Elwood, we got five back for a total of $10. So you've actually lost money to those people that you mailed to in Elwood. So you might then choose next time not to even bother with them. The second one here is the mail history summary. Now at the bottom of the second donor screen, there is a room there where it keeps track of the last four campaigns that were mailed. And so if we say yes to this, it will update that and so it will record CACQ as the last campaign that was mailed and the previous four get bumped along and one drops off the end. It also updates the total number of mails that they've received and the total number of mails since they last donated. And then the final one here is the actual contact file. So do we want to create a contact record for each of those? So we say yes to that. And instead of saying mailing, I might say, you know, tax 2014 appeal. 
or something a little bit more meaningful than just mail out. We'll put today's date there, T for today. We'll say that that's when it was mailed out. The contact type in this case is M for mail out, but you might have actually emailed them instead, so you could then choose the appropriate contact type for that. Do we want to update each of the donors last changed by date on the donor record? Well, the fact that we've nearly updated the last change campaign, to my mind, is not enough reason to actually update that, so I would leave that as a no. On the campaign record, there is a field that says number mailed, and if you would like to include however many, in this case 11, it can increment that number. So if you've mailed you know, 2,000, you can do the count and update that record for you rather than you having to manually do that. So I might say yes to that. It's got my initials there. I say yes to continue. And uh, OK, so what it's saying is I've already updated using that same campaign. What do I want to do? Do I want to ignore all the people that have already got that, update them anyway, or abort? So I might just say update them anyway, and off it goes, and it's finished. Um, so that's now complete. So that's how we do the mail history. And so typically that would get done once the um, selection files have been finalized. Maybe you've created the merge data files and sent them to the mail house, or you've done the merge. That's the best time to update that. You can update it later on, but then if you do that after you've received donations, don't update the postcode mail response database. OK. Are there any other questions that have come in? Certainly are, Murray. We're just coming up to time, so I'll just briefly go through the last couple. Um, there's one from uh, Angela. She's asking, uh, let me find it. <laughs> so, can I generate a report that shows me campaign by source code so that I only see the donors and amounts to a particular campaign? Um, so Angela's saying, sometimes donors give more than to one particular campaign, so she wants to capture them, but she doesn't want to see any donations to any other campaign. Um, yes, in the donor appeals, and this might be better done as a, an SMR, but uh, in the donor appeals program you can select people that have given to particular campaigns and then when you output the results in the mail merge data file, there is an option there where you can say, do you want to output um, an amount based on a period of time? And if you say yes, you can specify the period and again you can select particular campaigns and then it will give you a total and a count for all the donations that match. So in this case, it would be just how much that particular person or those people have given to that particular campaign. But um, yeah, it might be best if there was a more of a, an interactive discussion. So if Angela wants to raise an SMR, then that's probably the best way to deal with that if that hasn't answered her question. OK. We'll have to wrap it up there, Murray, unfortunately. Okay. We've hit 3 o'clock. So um, apologies right. for um, anyone who uh, who has um, posted a question. I will leave the line open for a couple minutes if you have any more questions, and we'll, we'll document those and follow up with you individually. So um, thank you for, for that. And uh, thank you, Gary and Murray, for today's presentation. Now, our next webcast is scheduled for Tuesday the 19th of August at 2 p.m and that will be on credit card processing. So details will be posted um, or emailed to you shortly about that one. And also you'll find a recording of all of our webcasts at our website at donman.net.au and it's under the What's New area. So if you, any of your colleagues missed today's webcast, it will be posted there in the next week or so. And of course, if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact us on the email or, or give us a call um, or log your questions in the next couple of minutes now. So that concludes our webcast for today. Thank you again for joining us and goodbye. Thank you. Bye.